artery cleared in their heart. So it's, we don't have that here, of course, but every little minute counts with stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting. Wow. Any other thoughts or questions at this point? Uh, Chief, just if you would, where are you thinking uh, capital expenses under the ALS equipment uh, category line item that will r rise to um, capital expenses at, at, for out years? Out years, I think we're going to be pretty good on the budget wise until we, until those monitors reach a number that's going to put it into the capital spectrum. Mm -hmm. like, like I said, this is a 50,000 will cover a lot of equipment the majority of it being that one monitor. I see that if we have to replace a monitor in five, six, or eight years, um, that would be a budgetary request right now. Not Between the cost of technology coming down, perhaps, and also... Correct. Okay. So operating. It'd be an operating issue. It'd be a little at 50,000 call threshold. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. So we probably won't, unless something cha if something changes, obviously, but otherwise we probably won't be seeing these. Uh, and correct. And another after thing, this the 22 is... This, um, the funding for this last year came from the ambulance account, the ambulance reserve account. So yep, every time we the door, we get, you know, we charge for those services, which we just, uh, for your information too, looked at back in April and, and raised accordingly about 10%. Okay, great. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Appreciate it, Chief. Can we uh, touch on the uh, SCBA? The SCBA. So actually, I figured this is year three of a four-year project, I believe, right, we're looking at? Yes, totally. yeah. Um, in the documents online, there is the quote for 2020 or for this next purchase. Uh, it's a little more <clears> than <throat> what we anticipated before we've made those corrections. Um, but just to give you an idea of what we're getting, this is one setup here. Um, and difference is, I, I almost wanted to bring in a an older pack to show you the differences in what they are. Um, but where these are from before, ergonomically, they're better. They have movement in the hips. So when your hips move, you're not tied to this, this rigid pack behind you. Their safeties under NFPA uh, raised what the lower alarms go off at. So when the air goes off, there's a vibratory alarm and an audible alarm. Uh, there's also on the side is emergency connections for breathing. Let me turn it on real quick so you can hear all the noise. <laughs> So where we're at is the mask is on this side, it's caught up. And on this side is our regulator, or our, our just it's a second stage regulator, but it gives us all our, and it also gives us what's built in, where we used to have before is a separate pass device. So what happens is, is there's no motion in this pack, it starts to sound like oh, a wow. So a down firefighter, it's the pass device is integrated into this path. That's cool. It's part of the safety now. That's amazing. Where we used to have ones before that were separate, they were made this nightmare. Um, it's also, I pushed a button, but I think I deafened everybody. If it was <laughs> um, here, uh, if they push the button and hold it, it sounds that alarm. And it's this wonderful escalating softer tone as it goes up. Wow. Well, at least nobody's can ever, you get the, the fire ground wiggle where everybody's always. <laughs> Standing there and they're wiggling their hips to make sure these things stay so cool. <laughs> um, So as I said, as you go down and the percentages as they go down, uh, the NFP allowable percentages that you were allowed to go down to was much lower. These are up. It's about twenty percent, I think now. Um, and as they go, there's also lights on the back. They ought to patent that. They can do a spin-off where you, you yeah, put it on yourself yeah, and you're sitting at your, your desk. desk. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wake up. Uh, get up. <laughs> the other part about this is where they are, and you won't be able to see it, is, is right here, there's a heads-up display that tells the firefighter how much air they have in their car. Cool. So they can look on the, on the device over here, and they can look and get a rate, but they don't have to. They can look up here, and they'll get green lights or red lights or yellow lights. Nice. So right there, what we're buying is every year we're buying 10 of these and we're buying two bottles. The bottles themselves are the fiberglass wrapped. Um, we keep up with the hydros on them so to make sure they're safe. Um, 
these units are so much nicer than the old frames we used to have. They're mm -hmm. much more comfortable. They have built-in drag straps on the tops. So you can actually pull a firefighter who's down. Um, just ergonomically, safety-wise, uh, the proper NFPA compliance, National Fire Protection Association compliance, too. Chief, so after this purchase, you'll be entirely equipped with this model? So right now, we're... One more year. One more year after this, we're close to replacing all our old 2,098 models right now, if I remember right. Um, we may have a, a couple of the older models after this year. Um, and then we're to the point after year four where it will be that budgetary item will replace a couple of years instead of replacing 10. So it may be a $20,000 item instead of a $100,000 item. Great. So, Peter? Chief, is it is each of those units are they personalized to an individual or are they no okay. they're they're assigned to each truck. Okay. And then we bought these bags afterwards too to protect the masks too, which is is a, a matter of course. Uh they're they're on each truck. So an engine, our first two engines on our ladder truck, that's what this came off of. Um have five. Okay. And then some of our other smaller trucks have less. So is there a procedure and policy um, after you use it, what you would do with it after? So, yes, so a big part of um, the fire service right now is cancer prevention. And I'll tell you that we're, I just can't be more than appreciative whenever we get into our new building, the accommodations that we have in that building, of which one is a room just to decon equipment. Awesome. Stainless steel, we can bring in EMS supplies, hose down, whatever, wonderful substances are on those. We're bringing our fire gear from the back that never has to enter into living quarters. They can come in, take all the fire gear off or trash bags and bring them in to there, throw them in an extractor, just a big commercial washing machine that's mm -hmm. set up for that equipment, has a program that we can track when people are washing them and making sure that all this gear is kept clean and kept stored. Another point in the new station is a room for the air equipment, SCBA. New compressor, area, stainless steel, sink, we can wash all the equipment, we can hang them up, we can dry them. And that way that when a person puts them on the next time, they're not inhaling the, the carcinogens mm -hmm. from the yeah, last fire. Exactly. Yeah. So it, we're really fortunate and I'm very appreciative of, of what we're being given to, to use. So, so once you buy sure they're safe, the capital asset, then it's an operating expense on Perpetual care and perpetual care. I have three people that have gone away to training to be field service technicians that take care of the small problems at home. Um, we have the company who is, is services a lot of uh, services all our equipment every year. They come down and they flow and test them, make sure they're they're working properly, make sure we're hydros. We keep up on you know where we're at. So sounds good. I love it. But yeah, that's important. So. All important aspects. Keeping up with the. Uh, Keeping up on the equipment. Um, okay, great. So we're gonna jump over. Last one's the new wall. No, yeah, this one I was kind of interested in hearing more about. So I did uh, the technical rescue equipment. That's the last one on there. Is it trench rescue or yeah, technical? Yeah, it's trench. It's a technical aspect um, in that it's, it's how it's, uh, Defined. One thing the fire service has really gotten is um, an all hazard response. Yeah, it's everything now. Yeah, it's everything now. Um, what we did, and I'm just going to pass around, I didn't put them in the project. This um, is a job site type of situation. But I put in some pictures of a class that we had this past winter. Mass Fire Academy came down and did a, um, a class on trench rescue. And what it is, is is for the fact of when we have all these construction sites, um, and quite honestly, we can go as far as people digging holes in the beach, you know, <laughs> taking the big holes. That's also considered technical rescue. And when what happens when those walls collapse? Yeah. And how do we get them out safely? So the first part of anything that we do is to make sure our people are trained. You know, we have people trained to do the job, and the next part is to getting them the equipment be able to do the job. Um, the equipment that's priced up there at the $200,000 is uh, a complete setup. 
it's in the documents online and it's in there uh, that would handle both trench rescue as well as structural collapse so where we're less fortunate than most communities is a lot of communities have regional response groups so the cape has a regional team they pull resources and they're able to buy equipment for the cape which we could tap into but like all mutual aid no. we can't do that because by the time anybody gets over here we're not going no to no fast boat for trucks right. <clears throat> so at the very least you know we'll have people our people training with the cape people as part of the group but when we need help they're going to be here as a so let me team. ask you chief through chair, this is really, I, I don't remember hearing this last year. No, it wasn't. We didn't have this discussion, right? Okay. No. This is interesting. Um, do we have a setup, Steve, now, Steve Murphy, sorry, um, where we could jump on the fast boat with people from the Cape? If the equipment we have is already here, Assistance doesn't have to be a physical vehicle anymore. It can be a person, or two or three. That as long as we have now, the equipment here for them to work. So I'll, yeah. I'll relate this back to something that's very relevant, very short. Yeah. Very little while ago, Summer House. Huh. Okay. The Summer House was a fire that had me very concerned. That's We all have those one things in our careers, in our, in our, our professions that if ever happened, we're, we're kind of really nervous about. That's one of those buildings for me. So I quickly escalated the alarms. So in the fire service, in the real world, if they went to a second alarm, the first alarm would give them two engines, a ladder truck, and a rescue. They may get 20 some people. A second alarm would give them two times that, or three times that. And the third time, they're gonna have more than 100 people on scene. I went to the third alarm specifically knowing that it triggers a call to the Cape. And I did it rapidly. I didn't wait because I wanted to make sure the Cape knew that we may need help. <clears throat> that in turn has triggered a discussion again with the Cape Chiefs, which I'm gonna be on the telephone call this afternoon, and part of our mutual aid agreement as to how we're gonna function that. Yeah. And a big part of this is with the Cape, we could we could get between Centerville, Cotuit, Hyannis, possibly Chatham. We could get 20 guys over here with their own resources, getting them here, not the fast boat, within an hour's time. And that's something how we're uh, looking. Their so they boats, boat. they have boats. Oh, okay. So they have safer boats. Hyannis has a very nice fire boat for their harbor. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, and they could be here within an hour with 20 guys. That's 30 miles an hour, an hour. And that's what we want. You know, that's what we need is the people. As long as we have the resources. So for a fire like that, that thankfully we didn't need, but a fire like that, if that building and that condition had gotten going, yeah. it would have been defending the stuff around it or defending the block, right. depending on how far it progressed and how quickly we could have reacted to it. Chief, what's the fallback in inclement weather? Obviously, inclement weather is going to mitigate fire, at least external, but at the same time, it's usually, maybe not. It's usually more of a hindrance to the firefighters because yeah. at some point in time, you know, all fires start small and end small. Um, it's just whatever is in the middle that becomes the issue. Yeah. So if we can't mitigate and attack the fire at its root and at its base quickly and efficiently, we're not going to be able to do our job and it becomes where we start to move out. So we always want to see, for the, the a simple example of a, a room and contents fire, it starts in a trash can or a cell phone that's charging and stuffed in a cushion. If we can stop that fire when it's in that cushion, we're great. But until it gets bigger, now we're gonna stop it to the, the object of origin, the couch. Now we're gonna stop it to the room of origin. And the, the larger that fire goes and the fire load and the ability for and to get in on the fire and put it out. And the only thing that's gonna do that is good, aggressive, trained firefighters. We're either defending a room, a house, a floor, or a block. And then augmentation from uh, 
off island service personnel with in that type of weather <clears throat> do we do you have some type of an arrangement with the commercial carrier that so high line we or steamship to, the, we, the the mutual aid agreement and the agreements with the steamship authority and the, and the uh, high line need to be revisited but they are in place as well as agreements with the coast guard okay so the idea being that we could call the coast guard and say pretty please could you fly pick your order and yeah. hopefully they would um and that's going back to the summer house, what we would have needed. Remember I said, you know, a third or four alarm would get you 100 people on, on a fire in Cambridge, Boston, Lowell, even on the South Shore, New Bedford, Mon, you know, Mattapoise. We had nine. Nine. We had nine. I had, I had firefighters that I was like, we were taking those bottles right there, and I was asked earlier though, how long those bottles last. If you're working, they last 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe 20 if you're like really good shit. Maybe. I had guys going through two of those bottles on a 100% humidity day at 80 degrees or whatever it was. I had guys coming off the beach or off the boat coming back in order to cover the station. And I had nine guys, nine firefighters on scene. And I was forcing them after two bottles, they were going in the back of the ambulance, they were taking all their gear off. They were sitting in the air conditioning and they were getting their vitals taken to make sure I wasn't hurt. And I had one person that overdid it. But again, at to what cost? My people are more important than the building. Yeah. So. Mm. so yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little deeper discussion than yeah. we're supposed to get into. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's sobering. And, and it opens up this, you know, it opens up just, and I presume that these are things that you all cover in your kind of scenario playing of worst case scenarios fire and town and you know the great fire of 2025 and you know having people here to help preserve history and you know getting them over here so i'm not going to go down that route but i mean it is this that point the discussion that you brought up and the points you've made are kind of sobering when you think about not even a worst case scenario but a three building fire downtown or four building fire downtown, um, which could very easily develop into a worst case scenario. And a lot of that is as much as it's an issue. One of the big things I've been trying to do, and it's one of those little rolling items, is I have a new fire prevention officer. I've redefined my fire prevention division. I have a fire prevention officer in charge of residential. I have a fire prevention officer in charge of commercial. So one of those things we've never done that were required by law is go out and every quarter inspect inns and hotels. We're gonna be doing that. Um, another thing is going into commercial establishments, retail, and going, hey, we'd like to do an inspection. We can't force them to do it, but we're gonna be in there doing that. Making sure commercial fire alarms, making sure our COIs when we do those certificate of oxygen, all the paperwork's correct. The, the hood systems are being cleaned. Right. Wood fires, huge. Um, what about that sprinklers? oily rags? <laughs> what about sprinklers? Sandy sprinkler Beach systems. Sandy Beach Club thing. Did, did Sandy you, Beach. That's my third there. one this year. It was very, very, very unusual situation happened there. Third fire from oily rags this year. I, I had one. How it got discovered? Yeah. yeah. Well, there was Sandy a fire on. Beach was a dog. Well, Graydon House was one. Yeah, but it didn't go to you. It though. didn't go through. Okay. I don't believe. Graydon House was one that they transferred from another establishment to Graydon House. Yeah. And then, you know, we had, yeah. I can't remember what the other one was, but we had another oily rag issue too. <coughs> and it's, it, honestly, it was never being able to, but one of the biggest fires at the very start of when I was, became deputy chief on Orange Street, was never able to be shown what the cause was. <coughs> but they were, it was a laundry. Yeah. So I uh, met on Maine last year. Very lucky. Fire and alarm, they showed up, they had building full of smoke, and it was rags that were in the basement. Operators trying to save a penny. So sprinklers, back to that, sprinklers are defined by building code. Yeah. Um, they're anything, any unit that is occupancy of three or more, residential, is required to have a sprinkler system and then commercial applications. So one of the big things that the fire prevention does and done through building code is working with new buildings, making sure they have the proper fire alarm system in place and proper fire protection systems that are there. 
Sprinklers are not required for residential. They're not required for a lot of different other things. And that's a whole other political area that is is difficult because it's a substantial cost. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now Avoidance. that CO detectors, combis, and the changes that have happened just in the last 10, 15 years, Steve, is absolutely unbelievable. Like, my, you know, and just in my own personal experience, you've got so many detectors now that go off anyway. But not, like, you've got, I'm not being no, I know. funny about it, but like, there's so many requirements that it's, it's actually causing you to become like an expert at, like, okay, not just batteries, but all the other issues that happen with them now, and they have to be the same kind, all these different things. So it's sort of become normal. Yeah. Even though there's issues and you wake up at two o'clock in the morning for no reason, which has happened to me like four times in the last month, but I figured out what caused it. It's, I'd rather have it go off than not have them. So it's complicated to feel like that. Sort of like airbags when they first came out. Then they had to put the switch to shut it off. Then they had to put the kid in the back. Then they realized that there's a pickup truck without a rear seat. I mean, all these weird things. But once you get past that, it becomes standard. And yeah. And that's what I think is what is happening now with what Steve is talking about. These restaurants. I'm involved with the restaurants a lot, so I know a lot of what he's saying. He's right about this. This is. It's not like trying to like be too policey. It's more about just having a relationship with these places. So just for my own edification yeah. in the restaurants, I mean, do they have control boxes where they drop oil or racks? No. Or they don't, I mean, this is like- That's part of us. You buy them at MCS, they're, they're like a hundred bucks. They, and they, they, they wash them and throw them out. But in the meantime, do they have a controlled environment they're supposed to keep Most them in? Most likely not. And it goes back to his, his let's throw a whole nother on, topic on the top with construction. Yeah, but I mean, I, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's I just, it's a, it's, a, yep. it's a rag box. It's a little, it's like a, it's like a little red trash can that's about this tall and it's metal and it's fireproofed on the inside. And it's got a little foot pedal and it opens up and you throw your oily rags in it until you get a chance to deal with them. And that goes to, it goes to the same thing. So you look at one of the, some of the other major losses throughout the Commonwealth recently and the projects up in Boston that the day before the sprinkler system goes online, they catch fire. Construction sites. Yeah. And all the issues with those. All the construction sites I drove by, I've seen or anything else, I've seen one construction site on the porch where they had a red can yeah. for rags. And I'm like, that's awesome. And again, that's part of our outreach that we need to do. And we need to be able to have these inspectors to be able to go out and do these to, to get best practices in place. I'm just gonna make a suggestion because you're here and I'm, I'm thinking of it, but you know, it seems to me that that would be, there's a rational nexus between that type of a thing and having a license for the restaurant, one of the various licenses that one of the licensing agencies through the select board would be able to institute a requirement. So then you have an opportunity as the fire, it's not expensive, it's 125 bucks or something, 150 bucks, you put it in a corner, but then the fire department has a, uh, a responsibility and uh, an opportunity to go in and inspect and also provide through fire prevention, educational outreach because I, I mean, I don't think anybody is just doing this to ignore it, yeah. but it's education. And if they won't let you in the door, but if, they ha if they're required to have fire control as part of their licensing, I just, I just mentioned it, we're not the fire control board, we're, it's not our no, we, purview, we're, I can tell you but it is our town. With great confidence, we've been working towards that. Yeah. Um, and working towards having a better presence. Uh, the COI system, we've been working with the building commissioner is finally, you know, the only thing we're required to do COIs on yearly are the establishments with liquor licenses. So we're coming in and in the past year, took me a couple of years, but we finally come to the point where we're going to come up with a system so that annual liquor licenses are done right before they're renewed in November, December. Seasonal liquor licenses will be done within the first two weeks of when they open. So usually April or depending on May or whatever else. So we're coming up with those systems, we're gonna have it better because before the system was broke in that we would go in and do a COI the week they close because it was done on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. So we're working towards a better system and, and that is coming into play. But back to the, the to French yeah. rescue equipment, yeah. this is a tool that we need in order to provide a service. Hopefully we never have to use it. It's, it's a lot of money for something I wish I never have to use, but I can, you know, I can tell you with some great confidence that 
you know, there will be a time and it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Okay. Uh, Richard? We have a request from our island home to repair their sprinkler system. Mm -hmm. have, have you been through recently? Has your crew been through recently? And my concern is they've raised this issue that they need repairs to their sprinkler system. Is it safe for the residents there to wait until the approval process goes through? So the sprinklers every year have to be um, inspected. There has to be an inspection. They have to be certified by a um, sprinkler company. And actually every quarter, there's a lesser inspection that's supposed to be done by an IPA standard. Um, and that's on the facility. So we get a report from a sprinkler company saying that the system is in service or not in service. That's what we get once a year. Have I been into that building? Can I say I have? No, I'd have to talk to the fire prevention division and see if, if they have any conversation or the building department to see. And that goes back to that, that part of that system is we're the inspecting authority, but all the paperwork and stuff for like, especially new construction starts with the building department and we have to go for head and collapse or fire alarm system. So could I speak to whether that system is, no, I can't because I don't know. I can find out. I, I have a note on that to follow up with you on again. We'll just, well, you mention it. Um, okay, Chief, thanks for reeling us back in. That's engaging discussion on fire, but uh, it, we are on the, uh, the trench uh, yeah. equipment request. Are there any other thoughts or questions for Chief on that before we head out here? Is that a, a mandate that we, we've we been told we have to comply with creating just um, trench equipment and oh, retrieval? No. Oh, okay. So it's just mandate, no. But and I, again, I'll put this in and I'll, I'll say that it's not just trench equipment with that, that $200,000 number that we want. That's a collapsed equipment too. So um, the one day a jack fails on the moving a house, we don't have the facilities and the equipment to take in. So there's like airbags that you can- There's enjoy. airbags and more of that when you look at the equipment in there, there's, there's pneumatic stabilizers. So if you look at the pictures, it gives you some sense of there's there's special the, the boards that go down they're almost concrete forms with um, uh, bracing boards in the middle and these pneumatic jacks almost they don't lift but they, they hold those um, boards open so that you can function in between those boards safely mm -hmm. in a trench or you can stabilize underneath of a house or so it really starts with the building department someone a contractor goes in and requires a permit to create a trench it's up to the building department it goes to the building sure. department there's there's a, there's a component too was with the uh, the um well the DW as well yeah and the hoisting yeah, licenses these trenches. are big trenches big. Not, yeah you know and the other thing yard work i mean to, the, uh, i just don't like when things get too grow over wood the most companies now have those things that you drop in Whereas yeah. in the old days, that yeah. was they didn't have them over here. Yeah. Okay, the, the the trench box, you know, whatever we call yep. it. Now. Is that what they it, call it? Right? It's a trench box or a coffin box, depending. And, and on the soil board. conditions on the Nantucket, a cave-in type conditions with the sand, on the, you know, not everywhere, but so it's some. I mean, this is this is interesting. I've never heard this before. You know, and another part it's of that too spot. is is within the past year, uh, Department of Labor and Standards have taken and imposed those same regulatory regulations of OSHA on municipalities. So DPW yeah. and wastewater and water companies have taken and really had to come up with their game. And the reason why that was is you'd have a, a private company with the proper equipment a municipality that covered. So there was a little bit of that going on with them. I may see this incorrectly, but I, I, I think that this is the type of equipment that will be used more for, this isn't going to be used in a, in a Toscana, in a Reese, in a, even a, even the smaller guys, TEC. I mean, the hoisting license regimen has changed. I have to have, happen to have my hoisting uh, license. The, yeah. the regulations that are involved in that are, there's so many hoops you've got to jump through uh, for safety, and they're good hoops. But I guess my point is, is I don't foresee this equipment used so much for that. This is going to be somebody who this, really needs it. This is going to be somebody who doesn't have the loader with the forklifts on the site that can pick up the shed that fell on somebody because somebody did something stupid. This is going to be somebody who's 
maybe doing something, forgive me for the technical term, doing something stupid, and they need the community fire this department to come in and save them. Yeah. This is rescue equipment. But you can have a foundation that's, you know, they, they backfill foundations now before the house is on. That, yeah. That's a new thing. They never used to do that when it was eight inch blocks. That was like a week ago, I think. <laughs> and, uh, but you get, you're going to get, there's going to be a house that they backfill and it's going to cave in. You know, I'm talking about the foundation going over. Thank Something you. can happen like that now, whereas in the old days that didn't happen. You put the, you built the house, the weight gave the strength, and then you backfill. Now they backfill. It's all backfilled before the house is set or started to build. Now it's always yeah. in. It's, this a big, is... it's a whole different world out there now. No, I get that's that, a... but but that's going to be something. I mean, this is no. What I mean, like that sand, non-virgin soil that's already loose. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing that this equipment would be able to. And yeah. this is rescue with. rescue equipment <clears throat> for when and and it's. Nobody ever thinks it's ever going to happen to you. Yeah. You never yeah, think you're going to have a car accident. Yeah. You never think you're going to get sick. You never think you're going to need whatever. Yeah. And again, it's, it's, we're okay until we need it. You like the drives of life in the old days and that's in a, in a, in a metal cutting two cycle saw. That that's, was a new thing once. <coughs> Good. Peter? Yeah. Is there a, Chief, do you have any thought on how many times or the thought process of how many times you can use it for town departments that are actually working underground as we opposed to the private? We wouldn't contractor? use it. We wouldn't use it if they were working. So when and, and what it, when this is going to be used is when something wrong happens. No, I, I know that. Yeah. But so, my, my question yeah. is more specific. Are you planning for? usage of this equipment for when we as a community are doing our own work, self-performance, are we thinking more it's, of a private company coming in and doing something? It's for, it's, I, you know, we protect everybody. Um, and I think more of the, as the more municipal product projects become, or the DPW takes on more duties, replacing, or the water company does yeah. replacing these. We've all, we've all driven by and, and seen the guy in the pit replacing a water meter in a hole. You know, and it, it's that. So it's going to protect. It's going to protect our municipal employees. So with, protect with OSHA, DPW, which is on the private side, and not on the DLS, public Department side. of Labor and Standards, on the, no, the public, public side. side. Um, do we have a? This is more of a financial insurance type question. So the company that's private who was supposed to make sure they had a trench box and they did not, and then we have an incident. So you're looking for a clawback. Are we going to build back? Yeah. I don't know if we're able to do that now. I know we're able to do that for hazardous materials responses. Yeah. So if we went to a facility for a spill and we had to activate all kinds of resources, um, we can build for that. But I don't think they put provisions in yet that we can build for something like this. So I, I, it's no different than oil spills now. Um, for car accidents, we've set up a policy where we'll only clean up a small little area. If it's a larger from a car accident, the tow company does that and they can go for it. Yeah. So that we're not incurring that expense of, of getting rid of that material. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we haven't gone there yet, but if it becomes prevalent, I imagine the legislature would, would push through for something mm -hmm. like that. But as this becomes more and more needed and more and more used, and hopefully, I never have. But we have had a couple incidents. Where but the onus on the inspection is not your department. The onus of inspection would be the building department. The onus of it, and that's kind of weird in its regulations too. Um, even with town code and with the state open trench law, if we find it, we secure it and we can find people. <coughs> put a detail on it to protect that trench. That's the front trench. Yeah. Um, but we're not part of the inspectoral. Part of the, Do you get notified now if there's going to be a trench that's going to be opened? No. So that makes it very difficult. Again, it's it's we're all hazard. It's a wonderful term, but it puts a lot on our shoulders. Yeah. Because we're you know, hazard, we're, you know, firefighters, we're EMTs, we're paramedics, we're technical rescue. Um, the next thing, and not to throw this out here, and I don't expect it to be a two hundred thousand dollar item, is we're going to do confined space. 
So that's something that I think I have budgetary money already that I can take care of if we need that, or tripods or ropes or harnesses mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's training that I'm going to bring in as soon as we get into the new station because we can do that within the station, that training over this winter. There's, there's sure. provisions within it. That not For the available. majority of communities, this is normalcy. Regionalized. They regionalize it. And we're our own region. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, we're our own region. Um, which brings us to out years. Uh, the anyone has anyone had an opportunity to take a look through or have any questions at this point? I've got Is a that couple. On the it's a it's a spreadsheet. It's not on the uh, in the database for us uh, yet. Session. Yeah, I didn't uh, port those into the yeah, but I, uh, I did this last year, and I'm sorry for the print oh, okay. small. This is our, it's not the one, this is more of my replacement schedule on my apparatus that I did with the... I only printed 10 years uh, out of the out years for everybody. But that just gives you an idea of the of where where I'm thinking. And I'm really trying It'd to be helpful for me, yes. work this. Um, and again, it gives an idea of how long I expect apparatus, ambulances, and cars to last. Um, now with four ambulances, we're at... We're at uh, eight year life cycle for an ambulance. Um, I can tell you with great confidence the last time we traded in, the last new ambulance we traded in, um, they brought that to. Oh, this uh, we brought it up to the dealership. We got a new ambulance. They sold it to a wholesaler. It came out of Attleboro and didn't make the Rhode Island line before it blew up. So we were pretty good timing on that one um, on an eight year cycle. It's just they, they don't get a lot of mileage, but. They're hard miles that they get. So eight years, that's a new ambulance every two, supported by the ambulance reserve account. Awesome. Good. And then the other equipment is more of a moving target, and I've been trying to space out, especially the staff cars, um, when appropriate. Uh, we came to a point about four years ago where we bought a lot of cars at once. And I don't want to see that. Yeah. How firm do you think Engine 1 and uh, ambulance four R for F F Y twenty four. So do you do you have enough information at this point to feel confident that that's the year, or it may change a little bit? So and so a good example would be engine three. Engine three is, is that earlier? Yeah, that's that? yeah. That's why I didn't ask because I figured you know. That's so that's that one right now. I'm kind of on the fence even on that one to be really? honest with you because okay. I need to see how much money I'm spending on that piece before I replace it. Okay. Um, that is one of my secondary units, so it doesn't get all the travel that Engine 1 or Engine 4 does. Uh, engine 1 is probably more on the lines of, yeah, we're going to need a new truck to replace that one because it, it gets the brunt of the use. Uh, engine 3, I'm more on the lines of it's getting to the point where it's, it's probably going to be smart to replace that truck than to do the service on it. But this is my first year, and Brian and in the back end, everybody were huge helps last year getting an RFP out for a mechanic. Mm -hmm. So we're really keeping track, trying to keep track of where we're spending our money on and you know, what's going to be what's going to be cheaper to fix compared to replace. No, and I appreciate that. I mean, I think the cost benefit of the maintenance, having an analysis of that is really important. The thing I would be, the only thing I would ask, and I'm sure you're doing this, is to keep um, keep in mind so that. We're not all of a sudden, there may be individually cost benefit to keeping a, a engine two more years or one more year. However, if they're all gonna coincide with having to spend $5 million in a year, so to the extent that smoothing those capital expenses out over a three year period, for instance, versus a one year, there may be benefits to that. Um, you're clearly looking at that, but I wanna articulate that as a, as since we're discussing out years, that's a concern for out year planning is us having a smoothing in our expenditures. I understand. Okay. And that's why I'm trying not to lump everything yep. together with our admin vehicles or anything yep. else like that. That's great. Uh, any other thoughts out here, Richard? Uh, just a question What's the status of the shared use metal building? The outbuilding? The outbuilding. It failed at the vote. So I don't know if anything's been taken up on that currently going forward until we get into the new building and I haven't talked with so that's not on your radar no and that was and honestly that was being carried forward by Deputy Gibson with the police budget so yeah we may see that with police marine no just go to police all the police would be easier 
The yeah. only other thing I want to I yeah. want to show you too. I'd be surprised if we is I put in there. We put in placeholders for Thank Sconset. You. I wasn't going to mention it, but now that you have, I want to mention it. I'm, I'm transparent right through. Yep, sure. Um, in that uh, that Sconset right now is doing about ten percent of our call volume. The demographic in Sconset is changing. <laughs> Totally year round. And you, you, year round. Aggregately, aggregately, aggregately year round. Not, the sum is probably 20 and the winter is probably it's, it moves high right. or something. Okay. So it, in the course of a year, it's about 10% of our calls, which is almost 300 calls um, in the course of the year. The mm -hmm. demographics changing out there. Um, but when you say calls, you mean them. It could be a gas odor, it could be a um, any call, any EMS, call. it could be a, an a alarm, yeah. it could be anything. Yeah. Um, I went out to Sconset Trust and, and took, not Sconset Trust, excuse me, Sconset Civic Association spoke a couple weeks ago about this. So in our budget, in last year's budget, there was money that was appropriated to do a building feasibility study yeah. to see what we could do with that to make it a fire station. Because right now it's a garage. It's a whenever it was built. I think I put the presentation in, in the, if you look at it, um, the, the document is in there. Uh, in my presentation I did as well as um, the SMRT study for the building and the cost estimation. Um, that building in itself, if what was done to that building as uh, recommended by SMRT to get, now it's not, we're not adding a huge, Taj Mahal, so it's right. one bay, a basement with locker rooms and storage, and, and a cleaning area, a washer. The first floor is a day room, a kitchen, a meeting room, and an office. And then the third, the second floor was four bunk rooms, and we fit in somehow a small one bedroom apartment that we could possibly use for something. Um, that was an estimation, and I, well, I can't remember what it is, but it comes close to $10 million. We need a negative interest rates to kick in soon. So, <laughs> they are in Europe. Part of I this, know. and when I presented this to, and, and part of it maybe as we go forward, and I, I wanted this to be out in front, and this isn't something that's gonna be, I expect to put through to the budget tomorrow, um, is I think I have a lot of partners that I can put in play in Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Partners in financial, finding a piece of land, oh. um, maybe donations in order to build a station. And this is why there's a vested interest. Well, and this is why I just, knowing that there's a lot more involved than we need, no, what about there's a need, Correct. and that how is it going to be met? That's why I mentioned, I wasn't going to mention it, you mentioned so, it. But I, I have no problem. The, like this is this aspect of it is and this is so what's happening in, in a lot of the buildings in the east end as well as the west end are becoming as their insurance rate for their homeowners insurance are becoming classified as unprotected um, the iso which is the rating company is any building that is more than five miles road miles from a fire station is automatically classified as unprotected. ISO go. is classifying that building out there right now as protection, but certain insurance companies on the larger homes are doing their own investigation, their own assessments. So having a fire hydrant doesn't mean anything unless they're going to use it. Right. That's what you're saying. Close to it. So, but and Snooki is out. Did you raise your hand? I'm sorry. <laughs> you cut him off three times. See, so, um, <laughs> the short of it comes down to it is is it's protected, yeah. but the thanks Peter the Chubb and area and the larger insurance companies are unclassifying some of those properties. Yeah, and uh, I am boy. not saying that as soon as the station's built, I'm going to put people in there. Or I want to put people in there. It down the road as we come, I've already sent people out for an eight hour stint during Daffodil. I like to do it a little bit more if I can as I work forward. But right now, it's not a building that I can staff. Mm -hmm. It's not a fire station. It's a garage. No. Peter, and then um, I got a question. And then we're gonna move on. I think Barnstable is a great example where they have all of their villages and their fire departments are in different villages and their taxes and whatnot are different based on their villages and where the fire department and their fees. So, I think that that sounds like a 
big. Are they? The, yeah, because yeah, it's a whole different mess of everything over yeah. there. They, they it's like they, fire districts. And they have fire districts. They have their separate fire districts. They have fire departments that are run by water districts. They have fire departments that are run by towns. So Barnstable is, and, and Barnstable in itself is. Catuit, Center Velocity, Marston's Mills, Hyannis, West Marston, and Marston. Good man. So all those five departments um, all function differently and all function off their own base. And mm. then Hyannis is a fire district. Uh, Catuit, I think, is a, I don't think that they're a fire district, I think they're a water district, but they function differently over there. Um, I'm not, no, I don't think I really am ready to entertain a separate district out there. I think we can take and with the beneficial interest of getting a proper station and working to, um, we might be able to come up with a solution that is going to work for everybody. But it's good but you're, you're up to speed and you know you're surrounding I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love yeah, well, we're counting on it. Um, Brian? I just wanted to let everybody know, because the question came up about the auxiliary building, it is in police for fiscal 21. Okay, thank just you. Just let you know that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Chief, I guess the only question I have at this point is, do you have a, con and if you don't, you don't, but do you have a concept of timeline for this? We're talking about how years, obviously we're, you know, there's going to be diligence required in various regards. Funding sources are going to, there may be alternative funding. There, there's a host of things that will need to be addressed. But along with that having been said, do you have a concept of time at this point or no? Not really. Okay. Um, we put it in as benchmarks for design money and then build money um, just to have them in there uh, for 22 and 23. This may be a two-year project. If it moves quick, it may be a three- or five-year project if it doesn't. And it, and it may never get off the ground. Mm -hmm. It just is, you know, it's, it wouldn't be good, you know, it, it's right for me to carry it forward and at least discuss it. Absolutely. And you, when you say you've got money and you, for design, that's something you... That Not is, design, it was a building mm -hmm. study mm -hmm. and conceptual what we could possibly do with okay. the building. But it wasn't design money, so to say. It was only 50... It was thirty, 30 or fifty yeah. thousand dollars. He spent twenty five. Boy, well, dollars went a lot further than. Well, how long? How old is that? That was just got that a couple months ago, and this was it's just a conceptual design. It's it's I attached it in here the report um, the best I could. I, I scanned a lot of it, so hopefully I got every page in there. Um, and I didn't really put in the plans, but if can you mm -hmm. click on the um, the placeholder for the design? Please. Just to give you okay, idea. so because we don't have this in ours, that's why I'm asking okay. you these questions. Yeah, because it has been. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. So I just. Is it goes to all the yep. documents? And then click on the. Yes, the, report, the concept the drawings. Concept. And I was, I was looking at our schedule and it's zeros for the next couple of years. So that's why I'm wondering about timeline. So you, there's information that we just haven't received yet that needs See, to be reviewed it's by right time. There it is. There right. it is. There you go. Oh, next, so that's the, if you you're keep, quick, Chief. Just click, I, hey, I Big love, in downtown. I can tell you this is, and I told this to Brian and I'm not kind of butter up Brian at all. This way of doing this is freaking awesome because I can attach stuff to my computer. I don't print up 15,000 things yeah. and worry what I'm going to hand out. And I got a butter up Steve. That's, is that yeah. the current building? This is there? awesome. Yeah. Is that the current building? No. No, no. The current <laughs> building uh, is just the two no. apparatus bays and a little ward off the back. Yeah. A little ward off the back. A ward off the back. <laughs> just a little ward. So that it would be a new apparatus bay and then that set up and that's but the first one. Would it be on that site? That is set up on that site. But the problem with this site, if we use this design, there's zero parking. And then keep flipping through to the rear elevation there. And I'm gonna show you why this is not going to So you're gonna have to build NRT bus passes and keep going. sleigh for the keep fire. Going. Right there. Look at that mass off the back. Wow. And I can already tell you that I've had several discussions with the neighbor who owns the property behind the station, to the side of the station, and across the street from the station. And they all love it? Uh, no. <laughs> no they, they want it, but they don't want it there. So, like I, and, you know, and it, there, is, there is a possibility, like I said, and, I, you know, if there's support with this, you know, going forward, I'm going to start talking to the... the the part the people that are out there and partner with them to get land maybe we can sell this building it's this historic building yeah. you know there's there's organizations out there we can get some revenue that way and then private donations and the dollar amount may come down even more that we have to do 
So that's going to be part of that bigger, broader discussion. Okay. No, that's how this to know. was the initial concept of what the building study and what could be done. Big lot on the front across the street in the corner. The next few years. So I think one of the things that we'll talk about is how we just I want to take this moment because I think it's it's uh, beneficial for us as a committee to be understanding and maybe addressing is how re how requests such as this. Obviously, this is kind of a big uh, it's not the biggest dollar number, but it's a big request dollar number wise monetary value. But it also is with respect to just emotions and perceptions and so on and so forth. Yeah. So this is the type of, of a thing. And there are other requests that are smaller type requests that we will figure out a way that the committee <clears throat> becomes privy to some aspect, whether it's there's a placeholder and a timeline or something, so that if we didn't get a chance to have spoken about the, the this particular project, we wouldn't walk away thinking that it's not even being thought of other than conceptually in your head that there's actually progress being made or there are uh, efforts being made. Some people may not say they're progress. I'm not in that camp, but I want to be careful. So I just, I guess the point is, I just want to point out that this is a, this is an area where we can work on communication. Uh, there's a lot going on right now with the finance department. This is not on them. It's just, I'm looking and I'm trying to learn as we go. And this would be a good thing to make sure we pick up. Uh, and part of this, I think will be addressed. Uh, I'm just going to say this now with our ability and a later point to be accessing the out years for the departments. And I think some of this information will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, and another example would be like the school, the 50 million for the, for the school having been in a further out year that we didn't review last year. We, if we do our homework, will be able to be aware of these things so that we can be conversant with members of the community. And believe me, people come up and ask. So um, I just want you to know that I'm thinking about that. I know Brian's thinking about it, um, or he will be. He <laughs> He's actually already asked to have you guys available, be able to pull reports. Yeah. It's just, you know, yeah. Like, We've asked for about 82 things, 82 changes, and I think they're just yeah. trying to work I through some of them. One thing I can say with this, and I, I understand this is the first time you're seeing this, if you need me to come back and speak to this, I invite you to look. I put the presentation of PowerPoint. That I they can't see them. They can't yeah. see it at all. All right. There's a That's PowerPoint a presentation on there and, and everything else. Okay. I've got to. I've got to find a way for them to be able to see them before they get advanced, and I haven't quite okay. worked through because of the way the permissions are set up. Gotcha. So I've got to figure out. That's one of the things I have to work through. I have an idea. I'm sure that you do have a couple, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, which I welcome. Talk to you about this too. Okay. okay. I'm more than welcome. Yeah. So this would be, just chief to give you that, and I'm no, good. Okay. But just so this would be something that's subject to you know in our role subject to how things are advanced through town admin and finance, what we would then do is set up a supplemental and then we would review it much like we're going to be doing our Allen home. So just so you're, you know, you get the process now. And then I think we're I going just, to move on. I just want to say thank you to Steve. Um, he, this is the way his mind works. It's very similar to the school system yeah. program that they've worked. And you just brought that up. I think of that what they're doing is so like, it isn't that they're trying to say, we got to do all this stuff. We need to do this, this, this. They're, they're planning it piece by piece. But I just want to just say, though, this can't sneak out into the island. It is like, oh, wow, we're growing. We got to build a fire station. No, the regulations create the problem more than the actual need. Chris, we used to have a school out there. Should we have a school in concert? I'm just saying. It's, it just gets turned into something different. No, I got you. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the sewer plant, you know, because we have so many people and, oh, my God, we're building too many houses, and all of a sudden we get this. This is because of what he said about the five-mile thing, which I didn't hear that. that. Is that new? Yeah. Kind of? They're kind of enforcing We don't have volunteers, legal out there age and all that we already know about that because like i said by the previous chief at this group and so i i look at this as like okay if they want it they can pay for it to some level which is what steve is saying i think too a little bit i like the donation idea there's a lot of money flying around here that maybe going in the wrong direction maybe it could go in that direction i think this is 
just needs to be presented in a way that isn't an alarmist way of presenting it. Like, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? No, I get it. I mean, I'm we, just saying, we talked about Mattica yeah. that in the past. Access to Mattica, access to Cliff Road is harder than going to Sconset. That was what Mark used to say. He was right about that. It's easier to go to Sconset than it is to go to Cliff Road. Yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> it may not be five miles, but it's a lot harder to get there. Yeah. Garden Street, the North Liberty, the way it is, is ne no brook's never going to no. be paved. It's complicated. So I'm just saying, well, this is a in yeah. my mindset. This goes go back to other things besides just we need a fire station and we don't. It's right. not quite that easy. This goes back to my original comment, which I'll say one more time, which is I wasn't going to bring it up because there are so many different aspects to this. I think Nat makes a really good point, and, and I would summarize it a, a little bit differently just for the sake of closing it out, which is that the information provided will help to inform perceptions. Can't be control them, and people are gonna think what they're gonna think, but it is important to get information that's relevant out to people. So people understand that this is not necessarily because there are X amount more homes being right. built in Wisconsin. But there, it may be a part of that, but it is also because of insurance standards and this is the relevant information. We're not the public information department. It's important for us to have it and hear it. And I appreciate the fact that you're looking at it. And I, I would uh, just reiterate Nat's comment. I mean, part of what we're trying to do here by creating uh, incentives to plan is to help departments who are planning their work which includes their facilities, and then they're working their plan, which includes their capital investments, which is what you are doing and what the school is doing. Yeah. And it's important that you do it. Is everyone gonna agree with what the expenditure is? Is everyone gonna agree with the investment? No, but it's important that we know what those numbers are for a variety of reasons, not least of which is services and not least of which is financial planning. With that, I'll give it to Peter because you had your hand up and then we're gonna move on. Yeah, I would just say the only one in this room right now is a professional organizer of fire is the chief. Yeah. And he's ahead of us and should be, and he should be ahead of the community, which he is. And I think that uh, I thank you very much for your job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Wow. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. So we are now, do you guys want to, we'll kind of go through the Rory's or did you yeah, fill yours you. out? Very, very much. Already? Oh, I did. Oh, <laughs> I missed the demo. I'm sorry. You missed the props. That's okay. I, I'm sure that I can pick up the phone and call you and I'll get you the same demo. I'll, I'll let you use it for the weekend. You want to play dress up? No. You need to. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Chief. Thanks, Chief. It's hysterical. Okay. <laughs> uh, discussion on Rory's just uh, ALS equipment. I did that already. Okay, so I mean, great. We're sticking to the plan, and that's going to become uh, hopefully operational uh, budget expense. The um, CBA. CBAs. Um, no other comments, anyone? And the uh, trench rescue equipment. I think we might have some discussion on that. No. I mean, I think we discussed it pretty well. Yeah. I just think it was not uh, a lot of people missing here today. Yeah. I, the, the, the trench thing is something again that I think has he, he did a really good explanation of it. I think it's something you need to do. It's not a waste of money. It's not something that's going to sit outside and rot. If they have a place to put this stuff, and it's it's sort of a permanent purchase. You heard them talk about a boat, right? No, see, I didn't know that. Right? I figured the Coast Guard would drive them over here. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. Mind, that's what yeah. I was thinking. So there's over there. You know the poorer side of the pond they got boats we don't have a boat we don't need a boat to go over there we need somebody to take a boat over here so that's good that they have this already figured out as far as some sort of a contingency plan with community over there for these things because in the old days i mean how many times we had the land bank fire they put the trucks on the boat they got here and they had to go back on the next boat because the fire was already out by the time they got here. Oh, yeah. That doesn't work anymore. We have more fire protection. The fire 68, we didn't have any fire protection. And the fire jumped across the road behind Isle of Lumber and went zooming out to Scots, you know, halfway out to Wisconsin. And um, so they're sort of working the technology, but the communication along with 
things that have built up and grown over time. So I, I see this as a good thing to, to buy this. I don't see any, any problem at all. With it. My only concern with it is, is we don't have the structure to be housing the extra equipment. Well, how big is it? Well, this is just a, just hard to tell. What to I, I think this is this is like a tra this is like a work trailer. You know, this is like oh. guys don't have workshops anymore. They have trailers. Yeah, that's right. That that's type of true. thing. Um, <laughs> or maybe maybe a little larger than a yeah. normal. You know, so it's this not an is eight a by trailer 10, with stuff in it yeah. that you buy. Yeah. Yeah. That you, know, you, set up? you have to have a communication system. That's why I asked the question about. Would, are you being told now, today, if a trench is being open, the answer is no. Mm. So if you have a piece of equipment that can help it, that has to change before you buy the piece of equipment. But at least if someone's known and put on notice, hey, yeah. there's gonna be five trenches today. Well, maybe the building department says, you can't do yours today, but you can do it tomorrow. So yeah. there has to be a system prior to buying a piece of I had that cave equipment. on Ash Street about seven years ago. Unless the town is yeah. thinking it's gonna do a lot of self-performed work, which, that's no, and that asked. well, they there do do. Go. We do do Thank some. You, so uh, I mean, I you know, Thank I mean, you. <laughs> sewer has the equipment to excavate to to do repair work if they need to, and yeah. and water company does emergency work. You now, how dig how far down they're digging is a different, I guess, is a different yeah. question. But when we I mean, first we heard this was this national grid discussion, ten feet illegal, yeah. and then you know I was going to ask him what the depth of. We know, you know what I mean, but I don't want to get into that. I, I, I do think that this is the type of thing that's going to be used more for the kind of and overly, really, really overly ambitious weekend warrior and um, smaller contractors yeah. who bite off more than they can chew. I, I think, you know, foundations, yes, it's but like, a just, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to use, let's use, instead of using names, we'll say yeah. one of our well known big excavators is on a site and something happens, they're, they're not gonna wait. If there's a piece of foundation laying on a guy, they're not gonna wait. They're gonna take the equipment they have and the expertise they have and they're gonna do something. This I think is gonna, and I'm, I'm not suggest, I, I guess I'm just saying it because I'm trying to bracket how useful this is. I think there's probably gonna be a lot of usefulness for this. My concern would be, uh, I agree with Peter, is that there should be some type of communication. A heads up because this is, this isn't like you hop in the ambulance and you go. There's an extra step of getting the trailer connected, and it's actually a larger piece of equipment to get and to maneuver into a, 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 a workspace. So having some advanced knowledge, it's not that they're, it's just that there's a ready awareness level. I think that's important. Um, and then I think it's a matter of, you know, how quickly do we need it? And uh, it, it is a self-contained trailer, so it can be yeah. stored outside, but. So anyways, those are my particular thoughts on it. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I advocate because as one operator in town, part of our certificate of occupancy, we had to have a preparedness trailer in place that was enforced so by the building department for even the potential of a storm coming the next day or two. Mm -hmm. So we, we have that. Now, I don't know, because I don't drive around and look at other establishments if they have it or if they do not. And the only trigger points is when you know, like for example, this, we've already approved projects that it could be used for, or kind of wait in the wings to be used uh, simultaneously. So I say it's probably, we probably should have had it a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But in place is that. Communications. Communications, yeah, just a heads up. Um, it would be good to, so these are like two things I actually think would be very helpful. Uh, maybe not what we necessarily anticipated for the green sheet would be, um, I don't want the first thing to be an uh, oil rag control box on a green sheet, but I mean, meaningfully, we have finance department, we have select board, and if the potential for catastrophic fire can be averted by licensing, um, installing uh, oil control box, um, we're gonna, and I believe that we should mention this because it directly affects capital expenses. Capital expenses we don't have to put in place. You know what I mean? It's, there's a rational nexus for us mentioning it. And then the other is uh, this idea of, uh, in concert with a investment in the trench rescue equipment, would be that there would be some type of a notification protocol between the building department at a, uh, as a, re 
making it a requirement of a builder, which was to say the hoisting engineer, to just give a call in or send an email. There should just be a protocol in place. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't have to put it on a green sheet yeah, for just... tomorrow, but I would like to discuss having those things because on a green sheet, because I think that these are the types of things that we, uh, that come up within the community on a regular basis and then they kind of fall between the cracks and could really make a difference in people's lives very simply and very easily. And we have a responsibility to try and follow through on it, whether it's exactly particular. We're not making a recommendation mm -hmm. no, to anyone. No. We're just saying we talked about it. Yeah. And then the, the liaison can refer to it with their uh, respective public body. If you guys don't think so, that's fine too. I would, I'm not asking for that we get into the discussion on it now. I really want to keep these minutes meetings shorter, but we can get into discussion on it. I'm just asking you to think about it, and then we would know for the next I'll meeting. I'll just file that on the dig safe. Dig safe is he's going to audit now. There's more and more and more regulation with dig safe. Meanwhile, they're driving stakes through gas pipes and water lines all day long, but not letting things. So there's so many different pieces to this. This this situation is much rarer than the day to day hitting a, a primary, hitting secondary. Right. It happens all, like I don't want to try. I'm not trying to say that's okay. Dig safe stuff though, to me, is more important because of the frequency, and it's getting to be more common to call for them to come. They're here all the time now. They just you just get the guy who comes over and does it, and it's almost becoming. Like normal, but you have to, it, it can it can go too far, and then other things get overlooked. This this thing here, I think, just is more about having the right sort of like the life support stuff. This is something that isn't going to get used as much as life support, but they have it in these little packs like this, little packages. They didn't have this stuff twenty years ago. This it's a, I think it's worth an investment, regardless of how many times it will get used. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I no, think I get it's you. better than a boat. Right. It makes more sense than some of the stuff they've had around for years that aren't getting used because there's other entities that, that do that. Mm -hmm. Peter, you know? did you want to have a comment? No. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, Nat. I think it's important. The information you're sharing is uh, one of about uh, the concept of the frequency of something like this and why... Putting protocols in place may or may not be beneficial. It was just a thought. Uh, I don't think we should call out the Red Guard or the National Army right. or anything. I just, I think that you know it's it's helpful to have. Yeah, it's available. I mean, it's, protocols. You know, so. Okay, good. Um, are there any other thoughts on the uh, trench equipment? Okay, good. Uh, green sheet we discussed briefly. Anything with OIH? Yes, the mm -hmm. presentation is scheduled for the select board meeting on Wednesday the 11th. It's going to be a 45 minute presentation prox involving okay. the consultants. Me. <laughs> yes, you. You're a big part of it. And this is where they'll make policy decisions or they'll decide? I think the hope, correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, is that the selectmen will endorse the conceptual plan of the outline of the timeline of what we're anticipating trying to accomplish. And then from there, it would advance to a capital request. It would advance through the, re the remainder of the process with the goal of putting it on a the town meeting warrant. Okay. For the I think for the design part of portion, and then subsequent to that. And at well, that point, I would ask for your specific input on details. Obviously. Okay. You know, like weigh in. Yep. The unvarnished. Get in there and let us know what you think. Part of it. That, at what level? Build it or not build it? <laughs> I, uh, that's a good question. I'd start there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're gonna that that meeting will need a two hour. Uh, <laughs> what else we got? Well, the answer to that question could make your meeting really short too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which is why we need a capital request and we'll need to go through the process so that we are doing our due diligence and we may very well come out with a recommendation that's negative or positive, but it's, I want to make sure we're following the process. Now, anything on senior yeah. center or that's still where senior it was? Center, I mean, we have another meeting, but I forgot, I just got the notice. I forgot what it is. I don't know. It's coming. I think the RFP is what still is out. It, the, it is. Yeah, it's so, due the 13th. Yeah. So it's due yeah. next Friday. Um, 
We have a. I mean, I don't know, today's meeting day. I just write, just had to rewrite everything down. So many different things happening today. But um, I, you know, just back on the Wisconsin thing real quick. This is a good conversation if it can be kept. I, I like this talk. We've had this before. Yeah. Not the the level of this, but I think this SMIT group is good because they've been doing a lot of things on the Antarctica, so they kind of know what's going on over here. Um, but I, I, this is a broader conversation that's important. I mean, there are people writing on Facebook that we shouldn't widen Wisconsin Road. It's, it's less than 21 feet in some spots. Vespa land is, is way wider. So, you know what I mean? We gotta get, reel everyone in. I like, I think we should have this conversation though but I just got, I just get nervous of how it happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think you did a good job explaining that to see. I just don't want this to turn into like, we got to increase the sewer plant for, you know, 500 more houses in the next two years. You know, I just hate that because that's what happens now. We're all red hot over too many of everything. And, it's, and it causes a problem when this gets brought up by natural planning and today's regulations and rules and whatever, and all of a sudden it can get turned into something different. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. No, I get you. I think it's going to, you know, it's, it'll be critical mm -hmm. in the rollout how uh, to be sure people are informed so they can make accurate, they can develop accurate perceptions. But you know as well as I do that there are people who are going to develop a perception one way or the other, I'm regardless of the right information. Foot. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, data next meeting tentatively will be next week uh, here, 10 a.m. Who are we going to discuss? Yeah. That, We're working on that. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be the subject are of our Monday week? meeting. Uh, I'm hoping to Just get done. Him. I'm hoping to get done early, so we don't. Oh, have any, oh, we are okay. going to. Um, I don't want to be writing reports over Christmas break and I'm doing them in it. January. No, we were, I, um, we were gonna. We I just texted the airport to see how far along with uploads that they were in there. Oh, trying to finish them. Hopefully, maybe today. So we were gonna. I have a meeting with them later. Okay. If, if the see. airport will schedule, we'll try to schedule a different room so that everybody fits. Yes. The uh, so uh, meeting date is September twelfth. Uh, location time ten a.m. Location be determined. I, I do want to just under the. I'll put this one to go to the order. We discussed last week the idea of having these uh, supplemental documents being a required element of the submission. And um, I think, and you guys chime in if you think uh, differently. There has to be meaningful attachment, uh, a quote, and maybe a tear sheet, depending on the level of the project. Uh, it's very helpful for us. I think it makes the project smoother, and it's got to be easier for you all to not have to be chasing that stuff down. Well, I mean, and admittedly, there's probably been a couple that have gotten past me, but yeah. we, we have, when we're reviewing projects, we that's the first thing that we look at to make sure that there's something there. We're trying to. So okay. Good. Um, but... You know, again, admittedly, there may have been a couple that have gone past us. Or no, 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 people, no, no. No, I'm just I, saying. I, I, I know that there has been yeah. a couple, but we are. That is um, one of the things we. And as people have been entering stuff, we have informed them that if there are not documents, we're not even going to bother moving it forward until you give us a complete information to pass forward. So we're we are trying to in, ingrain that into the process. Okay. And I, I've mentioned to you, I think that should be programmatic. I don't think you all should have to look if they, because there's a difference between whether someone uploads something that's a blank document or a copy of the Sunday cartoons to get past the requirement that, and then that uh, necessitates its own response mm -hmm. versus someone not uploading something and then you all having to chase it down. And it's your belly well, If they don't whack. upload, they can't submit, right? No, no they, they can. can. It does it because I can't yeah. control the upload. So we have made this basically, um, for lack of a better term, the honor system that they can go through and they can yeah, submit. But the first thing about reviewing was, was that they, they the first thing of the review is going and looking at supplemental documents. And if it's not, it automatically requests changes before I'll even look any further. Um, you know, I mean, I do see the utility in making it impossible to submit it if there's not something uploaded, but I, and I would hope departments would never do it, but there's no way to control it. No, so I know. They, and so I have to look anyway. 
So my thought process was, if I have to look anyway to make sure it's something real, right. it doesn't matter. I mean, I got to look at it regardless. So that's so the, why I've kind of not pushed the issue of making it. No, I got gotcha. you. So I think there is, I know there's coding that can make it happen. So that the submission, the, the upload is a requirement of the submission. Mm -hmm. And then the only idea there was at the initial conception was more that this doesn't get on your plate until it's ready to be on your plate. And because it shouldn't, it, it should be in, in my mind, and I'm looking for feedback, it should be, it should be on the department head's list until it's completed. It shouldn't be advanced. So then it's on your list to remind them. Well, and to, so, so the idea was simply that they, it's on their list until it until it's complete, and then it's on your list when it's complete because then it's the next natural step in the process. So, so go to sewer. I want to show you how this is actually working in one department. Okay, see everything that says draft. Yeah, that's in draft form because David hasn't finished uploading the documents, and he does not submit until all of his documents are in. Right. So I can see everything that he's done. That's not we internally. So everything in draft hasn't finished uploading, and he's not prepared. So this is the this is the an example of a department who, in my mind, is using the software the way we designed it. They're not submitting to us until they have everything right. ready to go to us. Because I asked him, I said, David, when wait, I need all these out of draft. Right, we he talked says, about that. He's, he's like, like, I'm, I'm not sending them into you till I'm done uploading everything because I don't want it coming back. So this, to me, is an example of a department using it the way we actually are trying to, to where, have it work. Where are we with DPW and their? Three um, different domains. We're, we're not very far. Okay. So but that, I will tell you, solid waste is in, and so it, it's all. Rob this morning mentioned that he they are working through them, um, and he and Mike Burns actually gave me a call last week looking for a little guidance. So I know they're working on them. Yep. Okay. I don't know how far along they are, but from what I have been told, they are making some progress. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you. No, it's helpful. I'm um, sorry, guys, to get into making the sausage. I was actually going to pick this up at our Monday meeting, but That's I just fine. it's I something guess. that I. Wanted to get some feedback on since we discussed it last week. Okay, guys, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? So, what time are our Monday Thank you. Meetings?